Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about one of the most embarrassing episodes in US stock market history. I'll tell you how a Chinese coffee shop operator managed to persuade the markets that it was worth over $5 billion, despite the fact that it had only opened its first shop 18 months earlier and it was making huge losses. It managed to persuade the markets that it had a digital valuation when it was a bricks and mortar company. The stock market loved these shares and at one point, the valuation of the company rose to over $10 billion. Allegations of fraud were made by a US hedge fund and after an investigation, the company was declared bankrupt and delisted from the Nasdaq. I'll tell you how the company managed to fool the markets and what lessons can be learned from this episode. Welcome to the rise and fall of Looking Coffee. As a result of the growing success of Starbucks in China, two Chinese entrepreneurs, Jenny Chan and Charles Liu, decided to open a Chinese competitor in October 2017 called Looking Coffee. Neither Chan nor Lu had any experience in either coffee or retail, but both had previously worked together at a car rental business. The business model for Looking Coffee was lean and mean. The stores were minimalist and had very little seating. All of the orders had to be made on the company's app, on your phone, and it was a no cash business. The company operated a delivery service from kitchens and the marketing strategy was that you could get coffee delivered to your place of work within 30 minutes of placing your order. The pricing structure was set very aggressively against Starbucks and the company used heavy promotions such as buy five, get five free and everybody who downloads the app gets one free coffee. The business embarked on an aggressive rollout strategy and started opening hundreds and hundreds of stores all across China. In July 2018, the business raised $200 million from a group of investors to accelerate the growth of the company and to open more stores. The valuation of the business at the time of the raise was $1 billion, even though it was making considerable losses at that stage. Looking Coffee started to raise its profile and to open more and more high-end stores. And in December 2018, it raised a further $200 million to facilitate the rollout of the new stores. And the valuation at that point was pegged at $2.2 billion. So we saw a doubling in the valuation from July to December 2018, at a time when the losses had increased further. The full year figures for 2018 showed that the company had revenue of $125 million and incurred a net loss of $475 million. At the start of 2019, Looking Coffee investigated the possibility of a stock market listing. The usual place for Chinese companies to list is Hong Kong. However, the Hong Kong stock market has a restriction of a minimum of three years trading. By this stage, Looking Coffee had only been trading for a little over 12 months. So it was two years short of being able to list in Hong Kong. The company was advised that NASDAQ did not have this three year restriction. So the management team focused their attention on listing in the USA. They pitched the business to a variety of US financial institutions and in April 2019 raised a further $150 million at a valuation of $2.9 billion. The investors in the business at that stage included BlackRock. By this point, the company had 2,370 stores in China and was now the second largest coffee shop operator behind Starbucks. The management team were looking to increase the scale of the rollout and to overtake Starbucks within the next two years to become the largest coffee chain operator in China. 
The company pushed on with its intention to list on NASDAQ, despite the fact that it incurred a net loss of $85 million in Q1 2019. As Starbucks expands in China, its biggest rival in that country is planning to go public. Luckin Coffee is expected to begin trading Friday on the Nasdaq. The company is growing fast, opening nearly 2,400 stores in just about 18 months. And Eunice Yoon took our cameras inside. Starbucks dominates the coffee industry in China, but a Chinese startup hopes to change that. It's called Luckin. Let's go inside and see how it plans to take on its U.S. rival. One of the first things that you notice when you walk into a Luckin store is that there aren't many seats. Luckin, whose Chinese name means luck and fortune, believes that it knows the young Chinese consumer really, really well. So it's investing more in stores like this. This is called a pickup store as opposed to a relaxed store. And it's essentially a coffee counter as opposed to a cafe because the company believes that more and more young Chinese will want to pick up their coffee and go or have it delivered as opposed to chilling out in a cafe. Notice anything? There is no cashier here. Luckin says that young Chinese prefer to pay for everything on their mobile phone, so you cannot use cash in any of the stores. Instead, you use your mobile phone to scan the QR code, and then you place your order on this app. The other way Luckin plans to compete is with its aggressive subsidies. At a Starbucks, for a medium-sized latte, you pay almost $5. With the discounts and coupons at Luckin, the same size latte will cost you as little as 60 cents. And Luckin believes that it understands Chinese tastes. So it offers Americano with orange soda, fruit tea with cream cheese, which is a really popular trend in China these days. And then there's the coffee, which is not bad considering the price. And on the 17th of May 2019, Looking Coffee listed on the US NASDAQ at a valuation of over $5 billion, raising $650 million of new finance from investors. The shares initially were a roaring success and rose over 25% on day one of trading. There was a lot of press coverage about how Looking Coffee compared to Starbucks and how it was intending to become the number one player in the Chinese market. For a short while, Looking Coffee was the darling of the stock markets and everybody wanted a piece of the action. Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Seema Modi. The coffee wars are heating up and Luckin is on the front lines. Shares of the Chinese coffee giant that went public last May are surging after a price target boost from KeyBank. The stock up 136 percent in the last six months and crushing competitors Starbucks and Dunkin with those stocks lacking energy is Luckin the coffee space's new leader. They really are going for the gold here. Uh, and I think that that they are, are, are going to probably be uh, a stronger growth stock than Starbucks because they're earlier in their cycle. They're doing all the right things um, and they're expanding their product lines. So, you know, I, I would say that the fundamentals actually still favor Luckin. Um, even over Starbucks, which is a very well established and very well run company. And the stock up 5% today. In February 2020, the sentiment changed. Muddy Waters, the US hedge fund, posted a tweet stating that it had a report on Looking Coffee, which alleged that the business was fabricating its numbers and that it was fraudulently overstating its figures. The report was based on 11,260 hours of store traffic video and alleged that the sales figures had been inflated by 69% in Q3 2019 and 88% in Q4 2019. It also alleged that the management team had overstated their advertising expenses by over 150%. And this had been done to make sure that the margins in the accounts looked believable. The report went on to make further allocations that the management team had sold out 49% of their stockholding upon listing, that Charles Liu had a track record of ripping off investors as he'd taken $1.6 out of the car rental business before the shareholders incurred huge losses, that Luckin had raised $865 million through a convertible bond that was not declared to the markets, and that the chief marketing officer of the business had previously been jailed for illegal business operations when he was co-founder of a previous company. 
The initial market reaction to this announcement was mixed and some commentators came out and defended Luckin and said that Muddy Waters were just making these allegations spuriously. On the 2nd of April 2020, the company released a statement confirming that $310 million of sales had been fabricated. Luckin Coffee, uh, China-based Luckin, absolutely getting creamed in the pre-market. The stock is off some 84%. And Brian Sazi, you seem to know why. What's going on? Yeah, uh, you never want to hear this, but apparently there is a, a, a potential accounting issue with inside of, of Luckin Coffee. Or that's why the stock is crashing. Let me read real quickly off the press release here. Uh, it says a special committee has brought to the attention of Luckin's board uh, information that beginning in the second quarter of 2019, uh, the company's chief operating officer, Mr. Jian Liu, uh, and a director of the company uh, engaged in certain misconduct, including fabricating certain transactions. Uh, now, keep in mind, Luckin Coffee has uh, they have put up some mind blowing growth rates over the past year was one of the hottest IPOs uh, in the market last year. Uh, but anytime you see anything related to an accounting issue, especially with an overseas company, you're going to get a market crash like you're seeing here in the pre-market. The stock fell 80 percent. And less than a month later, the chief operating officer and the chief executive were both fired. On the 15th of May 2020, Nasdaq issued a delisting notice to Luckin Coffee. And the shares were suspended and later delisted on the 29th of June 2020. Between July 2018 and May 2020, the company had raised $1.2 billion from shareholders and a further 865 from bondholders. And all of this capital was lost following the bankruptcy of the company. The Chinese authorities undertook an investigation into Looking Coffee and issued the business with $9 million of fines. An investigation was undertaken in the US, which led to the company being fined $180 million. So what's the summary and what can we learn from the rise and fall of Looking Coffee? Well, there's a few points to note here. The first is that the company was able to persuade investors and investment banks that it was worth over $5 billion, despite the fact that it was making enormous losses and also its business model was not digital. So we've seen a lot of companies in recent years, such as Facebook and Google, who have large valuations and are making losses. However, they are digital businesses and they have to build up their business model before it moves into profitability. And then once it goes into profitability, we know that it then can start churning off a lot of cash. So that business model works well if you're a digital company. If you're a coffee shop business, you have to incur a lot of costs. You have to keep opening more stores. You have to hire staff. You have to buy all of the supplies. There is a lot of cost involved in coffee shop business. It is not the same as Google or Facebook. It is completely different. So the fact that investors bought into the concept of a large loss-making entity that wanted to grow by opening more stores is insane. There is no way that business model was ever going to get to a profitable status. It was also up against one of the biggest companies in the world in Starbucks as its main competitor. So just a crazy business model. So why anybody thought it was worth $5 billion makes no sense to anybody. Another learning point is the fact that the Hong Kong stock market did not want to list Looking Coffee. So they turned the business away because it did not have three years trading behind it. NASDAQ is obviously looking to help young companies, mostly tech businesses, because a tech business, if it has all of the right ingredients and meets all of the market demand, then it can grow very rapidly. A coffee shop business is not in that model. So there was no rationale for NASDAQ agreeing to list this business other than for greed. They were doing it because everybody wanted to make some fees. The market was hot. Everybody thought, why not? Let's put this business into play right now. That was a mistake. And looking back, there is no way that they should have allowed this business to list at anything like the valuation that it went up at. The final learning point here is the management team. 
So the management team of Looking Coffee did not have any experience of retail or coffee and it's reported in the Muddy Waters paper that they took out a huge amount of cash upon the listing. And in fact, both of the founders were quoted as being billionaires at one point. So when the stock was riding high, Jenny Chan was quoted as having a net worth of $1.3 billion and Charles Liu was forecast to have a net worth of $2.9 billion. The management team should not have been allowed to take huge amounts of cash out of the business on listing. It does not show their commitment to the business. It shows that they were in it for short-term gain and they were just looking to elevate the numbers so that the valuation would go up and therefore they would make more money. So it was poor corporate governance in terms of the way the deal was structured, allowing the management team to cream off a huge amount of cash and leave all of the risk with investors. So hopefully you've enjoyed this story. You've enjoyed following the rise and fall of Looking Coffee. It does seem incredible that they managed to get away with it, but they did. Some people made a lot of money out of this, but most people involved lost everything. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and check out the channel for more videos like this.